You are now listening to Changing Lives, a podcast presented by Mount Gilead Full Gospel International Ministries, hosted by co-pastor Elena Robertson. You have tuned in to Changing Lives, as we are changing lives with the Word of God. So glad that you tuned in with me today, and I want to share with you today, dealing with the subject of murmuring and complaining. Complaining. Oh my goodness, this is something that I know that the Holy Spirit has really convicted me on at various times in my life. And certainly I am a forever student learning to uh um to to master uh, not murmuring and complaining. And you know, we're in a day and time where we're experiencing things that we've never experienced before. Um and if we get right to it, we're really not happy about a lot of things, you know? And so, um, so that can lead us to, um, murmuring and complaining about how we want things to change. We want things to be different. We don't like this. We don't like that. And, um, I'm going to share with you doing this podcast about, um, the effects of murmuring, complaining, and, and some of it seems like, okay, it's common sense, but, The enemy is very crafty in the way that he does things. And and the word tells us, don't be ignorant of his devices. And we're going to expose the enemy uh, in this area so that we can be productive, so that we can can receive all that God has called us to have and that the enemy will not be able to steal from us. Amen. And so when we look in uh, the word of God, it's all throughout the word from the Old Testament all the way to the New Testament where you see examples of of various people, uh, groups of people murmuring and complaining. And so we'll get into that in a little bit, but let me just give you a definition just as a way of getting everybody on the same page of what I'm talking about, okay? And so murmuring, and usually murmuring comes with complaining. Murmuring is when you tend to to, to say things kind of like under your breath, like you really, you don't want the person to hear it or people to hear it, or you don't want it to be heard in such a way because you don't want the backlash that could come back, come, uh, uh, to you from it. Or, um, uh, uh, you don't want to get in trouble. Uh, you know, it may not be the best thing that you're saying, um, or you're being sneaky about what you're trying to get out, but you want to do it in a way that the, the people that, uh, would could get a hold of the information, could do something with it, whether they change it or correct you or just whatever. But murmuring is usually just it's the act of of just grumbling. That's another way of saying it. Um, but usually you're saying it under your breath, and um, and it's not easy for everyone to understand. And sometimes it's just mainly within yourself where you're mur- m- mumbling, mumbling or murmuring and you're, 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 you're being, uh, grumpy about it. Um, you know, I know when I grew up and sometimes I even do it now as an adult, but especially I remember as a child, when my parents would tell me something, my mom would say something to me and tell me to do something. And I would say something on my breath. I don't want to do it. Just mumbling. She wouldn't hear. And sometimes they would, she would even turn around and say, what did you say? You know, and I'm sure all of us have had those (laughs) experiences, um, and I certainly as a mother, I've experienced it with my children, you know, and even with adults in certain situations when they don't want you to hear it, but they're saying enough to let you know I'm not happy and, or, I, or I really don't want to do uh, what's required of me. And so murmuring always means to say something in a low tone that cannot easily be understood. And like I said, it's related to um, to grumbling. OK, and we know that grumbling is related to those who are grumpy. They there sometimes that grumpiness is connected to bitterness, but that's another another uh, turn <laughs> in dealing with this. But we're talking about murmuring and complaining, and so it's an expression of discontent or dissex- dissatisfaction. It also can be stemming from rebellion um, and um, just uh, just being negative. Uh, it can be a person that's bitter you know, that could be murmuring or or complaining, but it can come from different directions. When we look in the word of God, as I mentioned, that it's in the Old Testament and the New Testament, 
I think all of us can can relate to or can remember the story of the Israelites. And so um, when we see the word murmuring, um, it's mostly connected to complaints, um, which is murmuring, complaining or whatever. But we see that a lot with that story of Israelites. And we'll get into that. And then in the, the, in the New Testament, we see it a lot with the Pharisees and the Sadducees because they were very um, cantankerous against um, the ministry of Jesus. And so they, so they knew that the people that uh, were on Jesus' side that were for Jesus, um, that that if if they as Pharisees and Sadducees would say something against Jesus, that that the people would rise up against them. And they didn't want that. So they would say things, murmuring, complaining amongst themselves, but, but not loud enough for the people to hear them. But let's get into the, the uh, you know, some excerpts from um, the story of the Israelites. And if you remember, they had come from out of Egypt. This is after they had um, walked across uh, the dry land where the Red Sea was and God had delivered them. Uh, by the hands of their deliverer, Moses, right? And so now they're on the other side of uh, the, the the Red Sea. And now um, they're getting closer to the promised land that God had promised them. Um, but something crazy happened from the time that they crossed over the river and um, until the point that they actually were able to get to the promised land. And that was that they wandered in the wilderness uh, for 40 years. And um, and so we'll pick up from out of Numbers, the 11th chapter, starting at the fourth verse. But this is after they for days have, have already been, you know, across the Red Sea, but they, now they're making their journey uh, towards the promised land. And so what they're finding is that it wasn't like it was back in Egypt. Okay. In Egypt, they had all kinds of things that, that they didn't like, and they were enslaved. They were in bondage, but there was also some things that they were very comfortable with. They were in their comfort zone. That's all they knew. Okay. And so, um, so then, so it picks up in, uh, verse four and it says in the, and then the foreign rambler who, were traveling with the Israelites, began to crave the good things of Egypt. And the people of Israel also began to complain. Oh, for some meat, they exclaimed. We remember the fish we used to eat for free in Egypt. We had all the cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions, garlic we wanted, but now our appetites are gone. All we ever see is this manna. The manna looked like small carrot of seeds and it was pale yellow like gum resin. The people would go out and gather it from the ground. They made flour by grinding it with hands, meals, or pounding it into mortars. Then they boiled it in a pot and made it into flat cakes. These cakes tasted like pastries baked with olive oil. And the manna came down on the camp with the dew during the night. And Moses heard all these families standing in the doorways of their tents, whining. And the Lord became extremely angry. And Moses was also very aggravated. And so that's another translation. But in the King James, it talks about how they were um, murmuring, complaining. And this particular uh, version talks about how they were whining. You, you ever, you know, had with someone when they're whining, they're whining because they're not happy. They're, they, 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 they want something their way and they want it their way now. And that's how the Israelites had gotten. They, 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 they had really forgotten about the fact that they were free that they were no longer under bondage, that they were no longer being beaten and, and held uh, captive to do things that they did not want to do. But they were so bent on uh, their, their comfort zone uh, 
and, and that they that they weren't willing to make adjustments and to shift and to change so that they could get to the promised land. So they murmured about the manna that God sent them. And it, they murmured about, you know, wanting to, to 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 taste those cucumbers and those leeks and onions and things that they used to have. It was free, free fish. OK. And so but it was crazy how much they murmured. And so as we take it up in the 14th chapter, this is what began to happen. Numbers, the 14th chapter, starting at the 26th verse, it says, then the Lord told Moses and Aaron, how long will this wicked assembly keep complaining about me? I've heard the complaints of the Israelites that they've been murmuring against me. So tell them that as long as I live, consider this to be an oracle from the Lord as certainly as you've spoken right into my ears, and that's how I'm going to treat you, your corpse will fall in this wilderness. And every one of you who have been counted among you, according to your number from 20 years and above, who complained against me, you will certainly never enter the land about which I've made an oath with my upright, uplifted hand to settle you in it. And so, it just it, so just right there, it showed how it king, kindled up anger against the Lord. The Lord had made a way out of no way. I mean, come on, if you just go back just a little bit to the Red Sea, I mean, who is able to cause water to stand on your left side and your right side and to make what was ground that was covered with water, dry ground so that they could walk a across. And God protected them from the, from the Egyptians coming after them. I mean, we know all the different miraculous things that God did, but yet they were blinded by that so much uh, that they began to desperately want the things of old. And so as we look at this, it, 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 it shows how when our focus is not on what God has done for us and how he's making a way, um, then we can easily get into the murmuring and complaining. I mean, I think, I think about an example that I had, um, when, uh, Bishop and I actually were, very, we were, we were uh, our younger years when we had our kids were young and, um, uh, you know, Bishop being a minister, he had lots of, 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 of shirts that need to be laundered and, um, pressed. And so at that time, I was the cleaners. Okay. And so we couldn't afford to take all his shirts to the cleaners, but he had several shirts at the time and, um, but not enough to keep them <laughs> circulating because he wore those shirts every single day. So that means that if I didn't wash those shirts in a timely manner and get them pressed, that means he wasn't going to have a clean shirt <laughs> for one of those days of that week. And so I can remember one of the ladies in, 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 um, in the ministry, uh, as I was a young pastor's wife and just complaining to her, you know, about the shirts and, and having to, sometimes I would, uh, be up late at night, you know, once the kids were in bed, so I can even take the time to press the shirts and have them ready and all that. And I was murmuring and complaining, you know, we need, he needs to get more shirts. Uh, we need to take them to the cleaners, but we couldn't afford it at that time. And so, you know, so I'm expecting her to, you know, to, to have sympathy for me and to understand, you know, my troubles and my problems and to, to get with me and say, Oh yeah, you know, and just get right in there with my pity party. And it was the very opposite. She told me, you need to stop complaining. And she said it just as straight <laughs> and just as direct as I said it. And it just kind of, you know, took me by surprise. But at the same time, I knew what she was saying out of her mouth was right, that I needed to just stop it because I had enough of the word on the inside of me to know that, that that's not of God to murmur and to complain. And so what she told me was to just begin to thank God, you know, for where I'm at, you know, and not to look at all the things that I didn't have and what I needed to have, but to look at what I had and to give God thanks for that. And don't you know that once I got my attitude lined up in that respect, when I got my attitude lined up and I began to reflect on God has been good. You know, he blessed us with a home and, and I got wonderful kids and a husband and, you know, I got food on my table and I could have gone on and on with the 
the list of how good God had been to me. So, but during those early years, that's when I learned, you know, how Mormon complaining w- could work against me. And so again, it wasn't too long after that, that the Lord began to increase us. We were able to, you know, Bishop was able to get more shirts and we were able to start taking the shirts that we did get to the cleaners, you know, and, and God blessed it. But I believe that, you know, just as the, you know, like the children, uh, the Israelites, as they began to murmur and to complain, it slowed down their journey to get to the promised land. So much so that God said, I had enough. And he began to shut them down and, uh, and, and he killed the ones that were just had it ingrained on the inside of them that they weren't going to change. They weren't going to focus on, you know, the goodness of God. They weren't going to focus on what was to come, uh, but they were focusing on every negative thing that, uh, that came their way. And so, um, so, but I learned my lesson from that. So, you know, so when you look at murmur complaining, What's the danger in it? Okay. For one, it stresses you out, you know, because I, who, who has ever murmured and complained and said they feel good? <laughs> you know, when you murmur and complain, you work yourself up, you get worked up, you know, and, and, and it just causes unneeded stress, you know? And another thing, as far as a danger dealing with murmuring, complaining, just like the Israelites, you know, they, they murmured and complained so much before they even got the manna that God says, okay, this is what I'm going to give you. And it wasn't exactly what they wanted, but that's what God gave them for food. He gave them manna, but it, it definitely kept them from being hungry. And so, but one of the things that will happen is sometimes we think when we murmur and we complain that yes, it will get what we want by doing that, but we'll find out that once we get it, it's not really God's best. You know, it's just something that he will give us just to shut us up, <laughs> just to get our mouth shut, you know? And so you, you, you want, you want God's best. And so, and so, so we have to watch the murmuring, complaining in that sense. It causes you to forget about the things that God has done for you. And, you know, it was not too long after that, that I had another episode that with our house that we had moved into is a beautiful home that we had moved into, but it was a lot of trees. And and for those of you who have a lot of trees, you know that during the fall, those leaves that are on those trees are going to fall and it's going to be a lot of them. Okay. And once again, during that time, we didn't, we didn't have people that, that came and, you know, that we could pay to do our lawn and to get the, 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 um, the, um, the leaves up. We did that ourselves. And so but what I had remembered from that lesson about those shirts, don't complain. Don't you dare complain. Don't let a mumbling word come out of your mouth. Rejoice as you're raking up those leaves, as you putting those leaves into those <laughs> bags and bags and bags and bags of, 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 of trash bags and you blowing that blower. And then no sooner than you do it, you look out the window, the wind is blowing and there, here comes more leaves, you know, but I learned my lesson from that. And even from that, you know, when I made that note and I said, I will not complain, even as I could feel it coming on, you you know, at different times, sometimes we're in conversations with people and somebody gets the belly aching about something that they're going through. And then the next thing you know, someone else chimes in and then you get compelled to try chime in. You have to let the Holy Spirit, you have to let the Holy Spirit convict you to keep you from jumping in on that bandwagon because it's going to take you down a road that's going to slow and impede your progress and your increase. And you don't want that. So it deteriorates also your faith. It's counterproductive to your faith because listen, if you're not talking faith, what are you talking? You know, and certainly murmuring, complaining is not a faith talk. So if you're not talking faith, if you're not speaking things, uh, that be as though they were. And so you're murmuring, complaining. And so it will counter attack your faith. So you may be believing God for something and, but it, but then if you're murmuring and complaining, then you may not get it. 
until you line up with the perfect will of God. And so it also gives that the enemy, he gives them an opportunity to sneak in. You know, um, the word of God talks about in James, how a double minded man is unstable in all of his ways. So, you know, if, you know, and I would say that when you murmur and complain as a saint, as a child of God, as a a, a person of faith that's supposed to walk by faith and not by sight, um, as one who's supposed to know how to use your tongue to to speak blessings, to speak those things that be not as though they were. I would say that um, the enemy, when he sneaks in and 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 does whatever. If if you are if you murmuring complaining, then he's going to begin to add more things to that, you know. So you're murmuring complaining, and then the next thing you know, you you you're looking at somebody else's stuff, and and then you begin to get jealous. Where you first you just started out by just mumbling and grumbling about you know not wanting to you know deal with what your stuff, but then you start looking at other people because your faith has flipped the script. And so now you, 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 you're, you're focused on the negative. And so now when you're focused on the negative, it breeds more negativity. So when the enemy, he get, he, that's it. That's what he likes to, to crouch upon. He, he he's crouching upon those times when we are weak in those areas and he gets in and then he can start slinging his lies to us, you know, that we'll never, you know, be able to, to have this or get or do this or, uh, find favor in this area. He starts slinging those lies. And so, so we have to watch that. So we don't want to give the enemy any inkling or any place where he can, uh, to where he can get in. It also breeds rebellion. You know, when we look at the, uh, the Israelites, it's also connected to after they, did their murmuring, complaining, they got closer and closer to the promised land. And this was around the time where uh, Moses sent out the spies, right? So he sent the spies, the 12 spies out to spy out the land. And if you remember, most of those who went to spy on the land, they came back with a negative report. And so, but Joshua and Caleb, they were like, this is awesome. We are well able to overtake the land. But there were those who came back with that negative report. And don't you know, they began to murmur and to complain amongst the congregation. And God saw that. And so when you go to, let's see, in uh, Numbers, the 14th chapter, the 36th verse. So it says, and it says, I'm going to need my glasses. Hallelujah. It says, and the men which Moses sent to search the land who returned and made all the congregation to murmur against them by bringing up a slander upon the land. Even those men that did bring up the evil report upon the land, they died by the plague before the Lord. So they reap rebellion by their murmuring and complaining. Now, remember, murmuring is you're not you're not speaking out loud. You're not. You're not having courage and standing up and saying this or that. No, you you you're throwing out in, in, uh, insinuations of you know that this is this is the way it is when it's really not that way. And so you 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 you're throwing slander and you you're working against what God is doing. Okay, and so that's what a murmurer does. And so when you look at situations, I mean whether you whether you're a uh, a uh, 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 a child in your in your um, parents' household, and they tell you, I, "This is what I want you to do," and, and you murmur and complain. You are working against the blessings that God has set up for you. You're working against it, and so that's rebellion. Or maybe you're in, uh, uh, maybe maybe you're in a helps ministry group. And your leader says, this is what we're going to do, but you have something else in mind that you would rather do. Maybe you're not happy. Maybe you didn't get picked to do this. Maybe you got overlooked. I don't know. But that doesn't give us any reason to murmur or complain. Maybe you're on your job and maybe there's some things that you're not too happy about the way your boss is doing it. 
Maybe the boss is doing the best that they can with what they have, but you're not too happy about it because you feel like things ought to be done another way. So what do you do? You get your coworker, you're sitting at lunch, and now you begin to murmur and complain about how things are done on the job. Now tell me, has that increased your faith? Tell me, has that uh, caused blessings and praise to go up to God? Does that give God any glory? No. It works against us. And so another thing that um, that that murmuring and complaining does, it it gives a poor testimony. I mean, come on now. We are the light of the world, a city that sits on the hill. Right. And so we don't we may not always go, you know, around saying, well, I'm a Christian and, you know, but but somehow, some way or another where you. You know, somebody may be in your job. They may know or get word that you're a Christian or you go to this church or that church. But if you sound just like the world, which murmurs and complains, and you're sitting at the lunch table murmuring, complaining, just like anybody else, then they're looking at you like, I thought they were a Christian. Now, you know, I thought it was too good to be true. All Christians are hypocrites, you know? And so it gives a poor testimony. In Jude, the first chapter, the 16th verse, it says, these are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. So they're looking to get their own advantage. They're looking to get their own way. When you murmur and complain, you're thinking about yourself, how you're not satisfied, how you want to get what you want, how, you know, um, you're not happy or whatever it may be. And so, but it's working, you, 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 you're allowing that to happen because you want to get your own way. And first Corinthians 10, nine, it, it, it relates to the, the children of Israel. And it says, nor should we put Christ to the test as some of them did. This is talking about those in the, uh, you know, Israel, the Israelites and did die from snake bites and don't grumble which is also murmuring as some of them did, and then were destroyed by the angel of death. Okay. These things happened to them as an example. They were written down to warn us who lived at the end of the age. If you think you're standing strong, be careful not to fall. And so we thank God that, you know, we're on a, 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 a another dispensation of grace. Amen. So back then, you know, the deaf angel came knocking at your door when you when you came against God's uh, will, his command, his word. Uh, when you murmured, complained like they did, like the Israelites did, he snuffed their lives out of out from under them. You know, everyone that was 20 and older, they did not go into the promised land. They died. OK, um, but thank God for the New Testament, for the new grace that we have on our lives that that, you know, that when we sin, which is murmuring and complaining is a sin because that's not what God likes. Anything that God hates is sin. OK, and so he hates murmuring and complaining. And so but thank God we have a dispensation of grace with this New Testament. but we got to recognize, you know, when we fall in error, when we fall into sin. Okay. And so grace will cover us, but when we know better, you do better. And the word of God says that you shall reap what you sow. So when you don't know, oh, you know, God's grace will step in, but when you do, then you're reaping what you're sowing. And so the, some of the biggest things that we need to learn, you know, as it pertains to murmuring and complaining is learning to be content at what you already have and where you already at, are at. It doesn't mean that you don't believe God for greater things, for big things, for more things. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that in and of itself. It's when you are so consumed with that, that that you lose all perspective, that you begin to murmur, complain, that, that you become jealous, that that's what you wake up in the morning. You're thinking about how you're going to get this or make this work to your advantage. You know, no, but you know, like with Paul, Paul had a lot of things going against him. Everything was in the bed of roses for Paul. And you can say for this year, certainly you, if you haven't learned a lesson and, and you haven't lived, you know, you should throughout this year, you probably have lived long enough to know OK, that it has not been a bed of roses this year, but it's up to you whether you're going to complain about it. 
Everybody wants COVID to go away. Nobody wants COVID to stay, except for the enemy, except for the devil, because it comes from him. But, but, but what does it do to continue to murmur and complain about it? How much more ground can we make when we begin to speak for the word of God on this, when we begin to declare and we begin to decree, okay, um, what God can do, you know? And then, you know, as it relates to that contentment, when you content, that means God is enough. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it doesn't mean that he won't give us more, but if he should choose not to give us more, we have to be settled in our hearts to know that God is enough. You know, you know, our actions speak lo- louder than words. So when we don't believe he's more than enough, then we put our trust in all these other things. And then what does that do? It leads us to murmuring and complaining. And so the other thing is we need to rejoice. We need to rejoice. Sometimes we don't know why things are the way they are, but that doesn't mean that God doesn't deserve to be praised. He always deserves to be praised. He always deserves to get glory. You need healing in your body. Don't murmur and complain about your aches, your pains. No, give God glory. Give God praise that he is the healer. And watch how things begin to turn around. When your eyes get off the problem, when your eyes get off the negativity, when your eyes get off of the lack, then what do you do? You turn your eyes to God and you begin to look at him who is abundance. Hallelujah. Who is health? Who is healing? And you give him the glory and it flips the script on the enemy. Amen. Glory to God. And so all throughout the word, it tells us about not murmuring and complaining. One more scripture, Philippians chapter 2, 13 through 15 says, but God is working in you, in me. Hallelujah. Giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. I want to please him, don't you? Do everything without complaining. It said, do everything, everything. So if you're washing the dishes, if you, if you're working, if you're, if you're serving somebody, if you're entertaining somebody, if you're doing something on a project or something, if you're working on your taxes, whatever it is, do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you, which means your testimony. That's your testimony. You don't want people to criticize you because it will ruin your testimony. It goes on to say, live clean and innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. And so I could go on and on about the different scriptures, but it's all throughout the word. But the biggest thing is this, love what God loves and hate what God hates. And certainly he hates murmuring and complaining. And so I want to encourage you to turn your murmuring, turn your complaining into praises, into gratitude into contentment that God is enough and that you trust God that he'll work out whatever may not be the way you desire it to be but don't begin to put your mouth on it don't begin to counterattack uh, uh, uh things that are in the earth rim okay so murmur and complaining let's turn it into praise and lifting up and giving God glory in Jesus name amen God bless you This has been another episode of Changing Lives. Be sure to subscribe to stay updated on new episodes. Also, find us on the web at mountgileadfgim.org and follow us on Instagram at mountgileadfgim.org.